Hello everybody, this is Jeff Janess, and welcome to our third lab exercise in cartography and symbology. In this lab we're going to see how symbols are often constructed from multiple layers of simpler symbols. And we'll see how to construct our own polygon fill symbol from several different elements. And in particular we're going to change the simple solid color polygon you see here to one filled with tiled images and with a blue outline containing white dashes. It'll give you a little practice and experience uh, set in several different parts of a symbology. And in this demonstration I'm going to be using ArcGIS Pro version 3.3.1. Now, first thing we want to do is open a brand new map in ArcGIS Pro. So let's just hit Insert New Map. We're going to want to add a polygon feature class, Eldon Small Project Area. That's a Forest Service project area in your, in your Flagstaff, Arizona. The uh, feature class, Eldon Small Project Area, is in the workspace class GIS data in your class data in the subfolder truck. Dry Lake Hills. So I got the catalog map to our class data. Let's go down to Dry Lake Hills. I'm going to find Eldon Small Project Area right here. Just right click on it. Going to add it to, oh, let's add it to the map we just made. All right, should be there. There we go. Now let's open up the symbology pane for this polygon. Remember, there's two ways we could do it. We could either right click here, come down to symbology, or you can select the layer, come up, hit feature layer, and pick symbology here. Just whichever way is more convenient for you. All right, here we go. We have the symbology pane open. First thing we want to do is just edit this symbol here. See how this is how our polygon is being drawn. So if we want to change this, all we have to do is click it. It'll open up the polygon formatting tool. Uh, you, you may see something that looks like this. You may see something that looks like this. Kind of depends on how you last closed it. So if, if you see something different when you first open it, uh, don't worry too much. Now, if you did happen to open it up here to the gallery, this does show you a lot of predefined symbols. Just makes it really easy to change to any of the existing ones if if, if that's what you want. Now in this exercise, we're going to make our own. It'll be a uh, definitely something you won't find in the list here. So you'll be able to see how to make your own. It's really not that hard. All right, so we're going to come to the properties that gets us to, you know, simple properties for this thing. If we wanted to set an interior color here, we could, an outline color here, the outline width, all that's fine. Uh, by the way, I don't know if you ever noticed, if you choose a color, you pick any color. Yeah, it's easy enough to pick a color. But if you open that again and come down to color properties, open up this color editor, you can also set a transparency for the color. That's kind of fun sometimes. Uh, it, it, it's nice because you can set transparency for one particular piece of it. So right now the interior part is transparent, but the outline is not. And just to show you all this, I'm going to quickly add a, a USGS topo map in the background so you can see that it is transparent. And see how you can see the topo map underneath the polygon. And it's just kind of fun. Anyway, I'm going to turn that off for now. All right, so next thing we want to do, come back to our symbology. Uh, we click this. Now we're ready to edit this polygon. If we click this little symbol, this is the layers. This is telling you the different sub symbols that make up the uh, overall symbol you see here. We got a what they call a stroke, which is the, the uh, polyline boundary. We got a fill, that's the blue stuff, and a few uh, things here that we can edit. Now right now it's set up to be a solid fill symbol, that's what this is, and a solid line for the solid stroke line for the outline. If we click on one of these two op op options here, like we click the stroke thing, we're, we have the ability to change the width of the boundary line. If we click this, we can start setting color of the solid fill. So depending on which ones of these up here you click, you get different uh, options down below. Now the first thing we're going to try is we're going to change the, the solid fill to a picture fill. That means we'll load up an actual image and the interior of the polygon will fill up with a tiled set of those images. So let's change this to picture fill. So we're going to hit picture. I'm going to come to our 
class GIS data, additional data, logos, Seppens logos. Now we want this 2C2, 2C-2, that's this one right here. Just hit OK. OK, and there we go. And we see how the symbol is now filled up with a tiled set of these NAU logo pictures. Pretty small. Now because we have this layer here selected the picture fill, we have different things down here that allow us to set parameters for that uh, fill picture. So first thing we're going to do is click the reset size button. So change that. It makes it a lot bigger. We're going to change the quality to a picture instead of draft. And you know we're, we're playing around here but uh, really this is a time for you to play and just try different things. So just try different sizes till you got something you like. Uh, maybe we'll just change this to 90, see what happens. Yeah, so we start to see a little bit more. And let's reduce it once more down to 50 so we can actually see more of the logo appear. Okay, that looks a little better for, for my angle here. Now we can start setting things like how it's shifted to the left or right and how it's rotated. So if we open up the pattern section here, scroll down. Right now, this is the angle. It's just tilted at a 30 degree angle. Yeah, it starts moving around. Now my image, I'm not seeing much of the, of the actual symbol here. So I'm going to scoot it back, uh, change the X offset to be negative 100 points, just to see if I can see a little bit more. And like I said, this, this is a lot of trial and error. Just, just keep on trying things until you see something that you like. I'm going to set the Y offset to be 20 just to say that I did it. Okay. Okay, now that gives us the internal part of the polygon. So we, we've seen how to add a picture, how to orient the picture, and how that picture just tiles until it fills up the polygon. All right, so the next thing we want to do just for fun is make a fancy border to it. Right now it's got this thin black line. That, that's okay, but I want to change. I want to make a thicker line, and I want to build it with a, a solid color and then a light color and a dashed effect on top of it. So first off, we have to add another stroke layer. Uh, this is, right now we only have one. The way we add one is come to this little mechanics thing here. We're going to add a symbol layer, and we're going to add another stroke layer. All right, so now we have two stroke layers. Okay, now we can come back to our layers. So now we have two of them here. And the way they work is this, this is showing you how they're stacked on top of each other on the map itself. So this light colored here line is being drawn over the top by this darker colored line. Now we're going to change the the, uh, the uh, characteristics of this. So let's make the bottom line a dark blue color and a width of three points. Just make that. Okay, that looks nice. Now we want to change this top one to a width of 1.5. We'll make it a white color. And if you like this effect of a of a kind of a stripe boundary, you, that's where we're at right now. But we want to make it a dash line instead. So we just can pick one of these here. And now we have a white dash over a dark blue boundary line. And it was that easy to make. So you can make kind of complicated symbols very easily here. If you don't like the spacing between the dashes, there are ways to change that. Easiest way is probably just change these two numbers in the dash template. First number is the length of the line, and the second number is the length of the gap. So you just pop in a couple different numbers there, you get an entirely different dash pattern. Anyway, now we have finished. We've created the customized polygon fill symbology that I was describing at the beginning of this lab exercise. So we're almost done here. The last steps are just to add the map to a layout, add your name to it, and then export the layout. So let's step through those real quick. Let's get caught up here. So first step then, we're going to add a layout to our project. That's pretty easy. The insert, 
add new layout. We're going to make it as an 8.5 by 11 uh, portrait format. No particular reason, just because it's there. We've got the layout. Now we add a map frame to it. That's this. We have to pick the map we want to add. I've got a lot of maps in this project right now, but this is the one I want to add to my layout. I've selected it. Now I just draw a box to hold it. Let's zoom to the extent of our Eldon Small project area. We go, to, we just right click on the layer like you would in a map contents pane. Go to zoom to layer. Now you might notice when we shifted to the layout here, the, uh, the tiling pattern of the images looks a little bit different. In the map, the images are actually a little bit larger than they are showing up in the layout. So just be aware that ArcGIS uses different rules to determine the size and spacing of image tiles when you're in a layout. You might need to adjust the image size and the X and Y offsets if it doesn't look good to you. Just, just know that, that that's just a thing. All right, so we're, we're getting close here. Next step, we need to add our name here. So we just go to the insert. We're going to add straight text. Uh, if you click this, you'll see these different ways of adding text. A lot of cool things like, like putting in this, you, you could draw a rectangle and the text will fill the rectangle. Here you can draw a polygon, the, the text will fill the polygon. Same with the circle. We're just using the straight text here. Oh, this one's fun. You can draw a curved line and the, the text will follow that line, sort of like if it's following a river. It's kind of neat. Anyway, we're doing the easy one. Straight text. Click this. Draw a little box where we want to put the text. We're going to add our name. We just type it in. Now, you might notice that when we added this text layer, we got a new layer over here in the contents pane for our layout. So now we have a special layer just for text. So suppose we want to change some characteristics. We want to change the font. We want to change the size, whatever. Two ways you can do it. With this layer selected in the contents pane, you can come to the text ribbon here, and you can set parameters here. You can also open up the text properties pane by right-clicking here, come into properties, and just open it up the pane. This, this gives you a little bit more flexibility. So yeah, do 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 it the way you like. We want to set our text symbol to be a font size of 30. There we go. Now it's the right size. If you want it, you could pick any other font you like. You know, you know, feel free to just play here. I think this Harrington looks kind of fun and fancy sometimes. All right. That takes care of that. So we've got our name added to it. Last step is to export it as a JPEG image. We're going to call it this. So the way you do that, you just come up here. You hit while you're in the layout, hit the Share tab. Just hit Export Layout. Pick a place you want to save it. And I'm just going to put it in the same place I have my project. I'm going to call it Homework Seven, Exercise Three my name. I'm going to save it as a JPEG at 100 dpi. So this is JPEG. Change this to 100. Hit export. And this will allow us to view the exported file. If we click this, it'll open up the file in whatever program we have as a default for graphics. And here it is, all ready to go. All right, and that takes care of it. Thanks so much for taking part, everybody, and in the next lab exercise, we're going to see how to do something similar with a polyline feature class. We're going to make two dashed lines side by side, which sort of replicates a four-service, four-wheel drive quality road. All right, y'all take care. Bye-bye.